How'd you sleep last night? Not not too well. I, I went to bed super late. Uh, yeah, I was playing video games with, with Abby Sanchez, who's a comedian, you know. Yeah, and yeah. And then, uh, well, it was just online, and then uh, I started watching uh, TV. And then I just was up too late, man. It happens, you know. How late? 5.30. I guess I, I woke up super late because I didn't get sleep the night before, so I overslept that night and... My sleep, my cycles are out of out of sync. They're out of sync, yeah. yeah it's really hard right now. <laughs> Is that why you're drinking coffee? Mm-hmm. It's very funny. A lot of people when I interview them, they're drinking coffee beforehand. I think they're afraid they're gonna fall asleep. <laughs> oh, you know, bed especially, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what video games did you play? Um, we were playing uh, the new one, The Division. It's like a shooting game, just online with each other. Yeah, that's it's fun. fun. It's a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not too into the shooting games. I'm more into the racing or like the Super Smash Brothers, like the okay non yeah. non bloody like Older school like stuff. cartoon violence. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's the yeah. level of violence I like. I like. I, like, I like when real people. It looks like real people are dying. <laughs> I prefer it. That's fucked up. No. I prefer it when I could picture them having a life before that death. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I want them to have a family that misses them every time I kill someone. <laughs> so you imagine like the flashbacks of their family, like getting the notice and being Absolutely. like, "Hey, somebody coming to their door," yeah. and like the wife's crying. Yeah, and... and like even though she died, like her friends will come up to her and be like, "I know he was like a bad guy, you know, but he was just doing his job." <laughs> and and then, uh, then there's you know, there's a lot of families that probably hate me. How many people I've killed in video games? <laughs> so many virtual families hate me. You're hated by many virtual families. Yeah. Uh, so so you so you said uh, do you usually you don't usually stay up till five a.m. <laughs> no, I don't usually. Usually it's like not that late, but I do stay up late, if, especially if I'm out. I have a tendency to want to stay out. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I Nighttime's fun. Yeah, I think, yeah, nighttime is definitely, <laughs> it's, is there's fun. more stuff that happens, more comedy, mm-hmm. more, I don't know, I guess mostly yeah. comedy for us, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh, past, past midnight, mostly just, mostly friendships, mostly working on friendships, man. Yeah, all of our friends have late night things, mm-hmm. so if you have to get up early, it's kind of like your social life is over. <laughs> kind of, nah, not really. Not too much. I mean, there's a lot of people that go to leave at a, at a decent hour, and I still Hang out. consider them really good friends. You know what I mean? Like, But there are the guys that... There are people that I only hang out with at night, you know? I've yeah. noticed that. Or people that you only hang out with after a certain time. <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah, that's yeah, that's when you know what your relationship with that person really is like, you know? Yeah, if you're like, oh, I only hang out with this person after midnight. <laughs> you know, it's not that. It's, it's when they message you, like, during the day, and you're like, you look gross. <laughs> you know, like, no, 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 I'll see you later. <laughs> I feel I sound like I feel like I sound like a shitty person, but like, I don't know, just like the people I've met, just you know, I've just my drinking friends no. that are whatever. I feel like I'm defending something I don't need to defend, so never mind. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, no worries. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, you've been doing a lot of you do a lot of comedy at Laugh Factory and stuff like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You tra- you you travel too to do that right? Yeah, to do N- not not yeah to do comedy. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I get to travel every now and then, which is very very fun. It slowed down a little bit in the winter, which is weird. It usually picks up at that time, mm-hmm. but it slowed down a little bit in the winter. But then it's it's picking up now, which is nice. That's good. Mm-hmm. Keep them busy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm Let's... going to to uh, Oregon in a few weeks. I've never been there. Neither have I. And, but the guy, it's, it's a weird situation. It's like the guy, he, I'm going out there for one show, but I'm there for three days because I have to play golf with them. That's part of the... You have to play golf? Yeah. As part of the thing? Yeah. Oh, weird. I didn't, yeah. So it's, it's, he's like, bring your clubs. I'm like, I don't have clubs, dude. Do you golf? I, I you mean, golf? I do. There's, they're at my parents' retreat. No, they're at my, they're at my parents' house. <laughs> But our family, our You're vacation like, home. Father, you remember those clubs that you bought for me when I was ten? Can yeah. I can I borrow them for this? No way, those would be way too small for me now. I'm twenty eight years old. <laughs> I'm a man oh, now. Yeah. I wouldn't have my ten year old. Yeah, clubs. you grew four inches. No. Oh, <laughs> oh. That's funny. It's just funny you thought I was five four at ten years old. It's three foot two. <laughs> I was three foot two until I was twenty five years old. And then boy I had a the best summer. 
<laughs> when I became one an average size man. <laughs> yeah, you really uh, ate your spinach there or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's great. Ah, uh, so you golf? I can. I took it in college. Like as a class? Yeah, it was an elective. <laughs> it was fun though, man. I got to work on my short game. We just played golf every day. We meet at a place and then play golf. And that's that's all sounds it was. like fun. It was free because we were part of a class. We had a walker clubs. That guy was insistent on it. That we had to walk our clubs. Like, he had to, like, roll them. So that, like, because he's like, it makes you appreciate the game more. And it does because, like, I remember I remember when I golf and I don't have a, you know, I have a cart. If I hit a ball, I don't care where it goes because I get to drive with my cart. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah I went all the way over there. That's cool. I'm going to get in my go-kart and slide up to it and try and, you know, burn out. So I don't care as much. But when you're, like, wheeling your clubs around, oh, no, thank you. You hit the ball wrong, and you're like, son of a bitch, you have to get all your stuff together. It sucks. <laughs> that does suck. Yeah. But yeah. it's fun. I've never really played, and I grew up, like, living, like, on a golf course area, so it was like, I, I, we would steal carts all the time and play in the clubhouse and, like, sneak in yeah. as kids, but we wouldn't, I didn't ever, like, I think I've made it done, um, the drive, you know, drive it, you know, practice it's, on a drive before. Golf but. is, like, one of the only things you can't play a game of unless you practice a whole bunch first. It's one of those few games. Like, you know, if, you, if you're not good at basketball, you just play basketball. And you're like, well, you get it, right? You throw this over there. You can do that. And you can play with other shitty people that aren't good at basketball, and then you still feel, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the same applies for golf. Play with people that are bad, because otherwise you'll get... That person's going to hate playing with you guys. Um, but yeah, with golf, you have to, like, practice, practice. Otherwise, you go out there and you miss, and it just, like, it slows it down. It's boring. You have to be able to know at least how to hit the ball straight. On a seventy percent level, fifty percent, fifty percent is good. Yeah, forty percent is what I'm at. So like, I'm almost an acceptable golf player. <laughs> I've just done putt putt, and I'm I'm happy sticking to that. Yeah, about. That's, that's the same thing. I mean, I feel like golf you do a lot in like business meetings. Like if you're like an executive or something like that's like a thing you learn how to do. So that way you yeah. can like schmooze with people on the golf course. Or right. Go to the country club. I feel like instead of doing that. Mm -hmm. You could just kill yourself instead of that <laughs> and never do that. <laughs> so you really don't like golf? <laughs> uh, not if it's for business. That's disgusting. You know what I mean? Think about that. Like, think about, like, oh, I'm going to go play golf for business. Oh, I dated a dude who definitely, he definitely, like, he was like, yeah, well, my dad told me I had to learn golf because that's where a lot of business gets done. Like, he was, like, wow. yeah. <laughs> I've dated some weird dudes. Really? But yeah, no. His he, dad. That's. Do you know his? Do you know his? Yeah, dad his dad is, uh, was like a, a is business super happy guy. that Trump is doing really well right now. Uh, I don't even. I, I don't know about that. But the guy I dated was definitely. Republican. No, he was. He was definitely a Republican. But the guy you dated was a I, Republican, and his dad told him he needed to take a golf to learn business. And you think he's feeling the burn? <laughs> no, I don't think he's feeling the burn. I don't think he. I don't know. I don't know who he'd vote, vote for. No, wait, a woman? No. No, he wouldn't this vote is for a man who's no. gonna vote for a man that don't take no crap. From nobody, I, you know, he definitely wouldn't be voting for a woman. He'd probably vote for, um, well, Ruby is out, so I guess he'd vote for, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> like, it's it's weird. I, yeah, I, I look back, I have dated some Republicans, which if they're fiscal Republicans, I get a little bit, but I don't know. But I'm sure definitely. Did you vote yesterday? Uh, no, I did not. You did not. Mm -mm. <laughs> what are you not from here? Are you from this different state? Um, I am from Michigan. Oh. Gotcha. Um, I am from, well, New York, originally, then Michigan, and then now Illinois. Like uh, upstate or in, in the city of New York? So it was Queens, and then it was uh, Long Island. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. That's mm -hmm. cool. There's a little fact about me. Why did you come to Chicago then and not New York City when you when were doing comedy? Um, because it's closer to Michigan, and, and Chicago was, an, is, was a uh, very uh, intentional choice. Um it wasn't due to anything more than if I had a choice of where I wanted to go from anywhere in the United States. Uh, it's, you know, except if I lived in L.A. or New York City already, I would fly. I would go to Chicago to start oh. comedy because I, I mean I'd been doing comedy for about two years, and I wanted to go somewhere and get better without the eyes on me and of, hey, who the hell is this kid? Yeah, without the yeah you know Hollywood or whatever. <laughs> or you know because you can you can be seen too early. Mm. It happens all the time. But you can't be seen too late. In the words of Chris Rock, a uh, stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Yeah. No, that's... Ah, I didn't realize how deliberate of a choice that was. Did you move here with uh, with anybody or by yourself? Uh, I moved here with Jeff Sheen. Ah. Mm-hmm. We moved here, I moved here like two weeks before he did. I got the apartment and they gave it to me early because I was like, hey, I have a job starting. So I was going to sublet because I had my job starting like middle of July mm-hmm. and our lease started on August 1st. So I ended up just getting in here. Then Jeff and his girlfriend came, his girlfriend at the time. And uh, with a cat, and then we lived together for two years. You and, and then, Jeff, Jeff and his girlfriend and the cat? <laughs> mm-hmm. oh. Yeah, which I didn't know they were bringing a cat. He just showed up with it in a box that was moving, and he just like put it down. He's like, oh, yeah, and he opened it up, and this cat jumps out. It was a cute little cat. I loved it. It was fine. But then uh, him and his girlfriend broke up. Me and him lived together. Who, did she keep the cat, years. or did he? She did. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, he, neither of us could take care of a human being. We didn't, we, or another, not, you know, human <laughs> a human being. Cats are humans. Cats are people too. They are people. Cats are pretty low key though. Like mm. I, dogs are, are a little bit more work, so. Dogs are? <laughs> yeah. I, I have a dog. She's staying with my parents right now, but. I could say they're, yeah, I would say they're more work. I think it's worth it to have, I don't know. Because you can, what, leave the cat for a couple of days, just leave food out, and you're mm-hmm. good. With a dog, it's, like, going to shit everywhere and cry. Uh, <laughs> and I get that. They're it's more a lot. De- they're more dependent of a creature, you know? A lot closer to, like, a baby. <laughs> you know, it makes Dogs you are? Real- yeah, I mean, like, all the stuff you got to do to take care of it. Right, locking it up when you leave the house. <laughs> Maybe not that, but, like, it being so dependent. But it, it, it they care about you. I mean, I feel like cats don't really care. I think cats are, like... Uh, sociopaths a little bit <laughs> yeah they don't care about anything but that's they're too like they're not like fun fun like that's what i love dogs man like you can a drop of a hat if you have like a fun dog i've always had those dogs where the drop of a hat if you wanted to play and just get nuts you can with a dog cats will sometimes be like no no only when i'm feeling sassy only when i want to play the dog's like is that a ball is that a ball yeah, is that a you ball can, <laughs> you can oh there's a funny ass video on the internet of this dude that watched his dog's roommate so or his, his roommate's dog so much that uh instead of you know like the key of keywords for dogs like want to go for a walk and they just like flip out because they know those those words mm-hmm. he changed he, he he just says child porn and his dog just flips out <laughs> and so anytime he says child porn the dog gets excited that's really funny uh, i loved it my mom uh, trains dogs for deaf and handicap and uh we oh, wow. used to have a dog that she had trained to um she trains them to attack them? Or? No, no, <laughs> no, like facility dogs. Okay. And she would train a dog to open their refrigerator door, get a beer, and give it to somebody. Like, we have a video of it. Like, that's we had a dog that used to be able to do that. That's awesome. And she said my dog was too small to be able to open up the, the refrigerator door. She tried. She taught her to open up a cabinet. <laughs> and is it possible your dog was stupid and she felt bad saying that? <laughs> no. Did you, did you maybe have the one dumb dog? Well, <laughs> no. Your dog can't because it's just it's a height issue. No, no, well, my, yeah, well, my <laughs> dog was like 19 pounds and the other one was a golden retriever, so. Oh, okay, that's fine. So that makes sense. It makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> are you the only person in like the arts in your family or do, are there people that do other No, stuff? my sister is, just plays the piano really, really well. It's be- she plays the piano amazingly and uh, draw, can, could draw. Um, she's amazing at art. She had several people get tattoos of what she drew. Which is really cool. Like that after the fact, she was just draw it. She do this like big blob thing, that was like it wasn't a blob. I, that's I feel like I'm. It's like it was like this big. It was big and it was just all wrinkles. And if you stood back from it far enough, it was uh it was like a homeless man putting his head in his arm. And that's what my one of my buddies got a tattoo of it on his arm. You wanted a homeless man tattoo? No, he did. He already got the tattoo. Oh, he already got. Uh-huh. It, was, it wasn't a homeless. It was more. It was like a representation. I don't know what it was. I, you, you talk to her about it. She probably has like a hundred words. But that's pretty cool, like to, it, but... to make something and someone be like, "That is so cool! I want to put it on my body for put the rest it on of my, my life." Body. <laughs> yeah, man. Right? You know? when, if someone could make something, then you, yeah, of course. Ugh. Do you have any tattoos? No, I've none. None? Mm-mm. Me either. I wanted to get one, but I'm so glad I didn't get any of the ones I wanted to get. What were uh, the ones you wanted to get? I don't even remember <laughs> some of them. Uh... Uh, I remember there was one time I was working. Like, this is I'm going back to my like douche days. It's like 21 maybe <laughs> um and i was working like 65 70 hours a week i was i was um entrepreneuring uh and i would uh i was like running these several businesses i was just really into money and business and all that stuff and i wanted me and my buddy 
You were like a salesy guy. Oh, well, yeah. For my whole life, I was always in sales and shit. Were you a shark? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. Like, were you like really... You saying was that a shitty person a shark. also? A shark. Like, yeah. like you were really <laughs> tough, like, in terms of, like, you were, like, always trying to get the deal, you know? I mean, if I, are you asking me in the sense of, like, on like one of my aunts would ask me right now? Like, were you one of, are you one of those sales no. sharks? No, I just mean, like, there's this type of guy, and, I've, again, I've dated that type of guy, are too, you saying like, like, the salesy, like... A, a liar also? Like, a bad sales? <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, uh, no, What's I don't... a shark? I want, I want to know your definition of a shark, because it was so far a shark it sounds like, you know, bloodthirsty. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like it more like cutthroat, like the business is the most important thing to you. Like, you would do anything to, like, make a sale. Yeah, that was my problem, was that I was really, really good at it, but I also hated um, any business I worked for, any, if I were with, like, if I worked for any businesses or when I was starting to do my own thing, um, my thing was, we're, we're going to make a lot of money. But I'm not gonna lie to people, and I'm not gonna like skeeze my way from getting giving money from people. Like I couldn't do certain things that other guys could do, um, like selling a backup Bluetooth to someone. You need a black. You need a backup. You need a backup Bluetooth. No, you don't. Yeah. You don't. You can just charge your. Don't waste your money on this bad idea. You know, like oh, you need this insurance on this. I can't sell you this. I can't. I couldn't do it. So that was my agreement with anything. Was uh. I'll make it up for you in sales, but I can't. I can't sell people crappy insurance. Well, that's good. You see, you got. Yeah, that's what I meant. More like the moral compass thing. Like I feel like some people are. Yeah, and I also hated people I worked with, like the douchey guys. And yeah. Stuff. I was one, but I was always like. You were like the less I'm special. I'm different. The less douchey of the guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And did all of them have like douchey tattoos too? <laughs> no, a lot of guys I worked with are more clean cut. Ooh. I mean. Yeah, not really like, like tough guys, you know. I don't know. It wasn't. I was a. I was a cool kid. I thought I was. I was trying to be a cool kid for a long time, and then I when I moved to Michigan, I was not a cool kid. Oh, you were. Mm-mm. Definition of cool became different out here. Like when I was in New York, I was like a bad kid, you know, smoking smoking cigarettes. Ooh, so bad. Trying out drugs. 13, 14 years old, like, hanging out with the bad kids, you know? Oh, like, really? Like, doing drugs at 13, Not 14? Like, like, just smoking what we thought was, I don't even know if it was marijuana at the time. You found a thing, we tried it, and then I got dizzy, and that was it. So I don't think it was marijuana. Um, but we did that, but we were smoking cigarettes, and we'd hang out, and we'd, like, you know, vandalize and, and steal and shit like that. And it was, like, on the weekends. Like, I'd go to my buddy's house... Cause I had to get driven there with my bike and my like my mom's and my mom's van, so like we would have to, like I'd have to like get driven by my mom to go be a bad kid. Like I wasn't even part of that neighborhood. I'd have mm-hmm. to like go to that neighborhood oh, to be a bad kid. I, I had to do the same thing. Like I um I lived on like the east side of Louisville, and I would have to go out of my way to either like take a bus from school or like get get a ride from somebody to go to the not as good area of town. Mm-hmm. But it was yeah. still, like, it's still, like, like now it's a hipster neighborhood. Like, it's not, like, a right. bad area. It wasn't, like, a bad area of town, but it was bad in comparison to where sure. I lived. <laughs> yeah, same, yeah. But it was, so then, uh, yeah, I was a bad kid. But then I, we went to Michigan, and I was just, like, I didn't like any every, Everyone, to be cool, which was, like, not cool, but, like, everyone who had, had money. That was the thing. Oh. Where I, where I was in Michigan. So it was, like, ugh. So I just became kids. But I just became really good friends with the poor kids. And we would uh, just, just the outcast of kids. That's hang out. weird. Yeah, you gotta be. Yeah, that's a weird thing to be. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, there was. Um, well, I, I stayed with uh, my, one of my buddies, Alan. I'd go to his house all the time because he lived close, and we would just always hang out there. We that was the first time I smoked weed too. Was at his house, like real weed, and I remember I couldn't move. <laughs> I couldn't move for like three hours, and I just couldn't talk. All I kept doing was like, I was, if you, I was like, if you just smile. You can get away with this today, man. And I was just standing there, and then like, his mom came in and was like, give me some of that weed. And I was like, this is happening. It was so weird. Um, I think I went off on a tangent. Sorry. No. What was I talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is what I was bringing up. His brother, uh, that was where like Eminem, that area lived. Like, he, where he, oh, like, you his... were like eight mile? <laughs> yeah. Like I sold uh, cell phones to uh, Haley Mathers every month. Oh, wait. Haley from oh, like, how daughter. old is she? Now she's like older. She was like fifteen when I was selling her cell phones. How old 14. were you? So she's a, year she's a few age, years yeah. ago. She's like twenty one, twenty two now, probably. 
Used to sell her cell phones? Mm-hmm. Huh. Interesting. She'd come in every month with Kim and, or the other person that watched them, I forget, and then their adopted daughter, uh, whatever her name was. To get a different cell phone? Mm-hmm. They would just throw down like 800 bucks and get brand new cell phones every month. Why? Yeah. <laughs> she just wanted Eminent it. Eminent money. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she. I think his, her dad is a successful businessman, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what? Well, if you, like... Wow, that's but, interesting. Yeah, so Eminem lived in an area, so then uh, his brother, like his, Alan's brother, uh, would always hang out with Eminem's cousin, Ooh. and who would always be at Eminem's house, so they'd always go over there, and then Eminem would always, every time that he would have him over, he'd be like, hey, take any shoes you want, because he'd just get all this free shoes, so we'd come back, and he'd like, he'd always have like 10, he'd have in his closet, like 10, 15 boxes of brand new, like, Jordans, or Nikes, or whatever it that's is. crazy. Yeah, Xboxes. Oh, man. Yeah, because he get free stuff, and so he just give it to his cousin's friends. That is so weird. That's interesting. Yeah. I guess, I mean, it makes sense. Like, if you get a bunch of free shit, you might as well give it to somebody else that might use it. But... Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. You're going to do that, right? <laughs> Someday. Yeah. If, if I ever have an extra sh- Nike Air Jordans or a Jordans, mm-hmm. heck, heck yeah, I'm going to give it to all my cousin's friends. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, no, that's cool. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Man, no, I didn't realize you were, like, Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> I wasn't. No? No. I mean, when I was a bad kid, it was in New York. When I was a, when I moved here to Detroit, it was, like, suburbs of Detroit. Ah, uh, suburbs. Like, the movie 8 Mile, mm-hmm. they don't, they don't live, nobody lives in the bad areas of Detroit because they're from Detroit. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, Eminem moved to a safer area. Clearly. So that's, like, the place. He had a mansion. Ah. Uh, but then he had uh, this other place, or I think Kim lived in, like, where I, where I used to have worked at a cell phone store and uh interesting yeah um it sounds very small towny detroit sounds a lot smaller than i think i think of it but now nobody's <laughs> well suburbs yeah. so it's not even like detroit is detroit and then like i lived in you know, the movie eight mile is the, like that's yeah like, yeah you know uh okay. and then i lived at like 24 four mile ah. so if you were in detroit and you just drove that many miles north i was there gotcha. but it was very safe yeah very Super safe. white area, yeah. Yeah, safe. You sell cell phones to people and smoke weed in people's basements. <laughs> yeah, that's the life. Yeah, right. And play video games. A little bit. So yeah. how much has changed? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, no. And um, did you always want to do comedy, or did you st- did you go to st- college to study something else, or? Well, I wanted to do. I wanted to do business. That's why I was doing like cell phone. I had I had part ownership in cell phone stores. Oh. That I would have to drive to, and then I lost all my money, and then I moved back in with my parents, and then that's when I started comedy. And I was like, that's you know, it's always at a turning point, mm-hmm. you know. Exactly. So I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I want to try this. I sold a cell phone to a comedian, and then I started. Do you remember which comedian it was? Mm-hmm. His name was Steve Brewer. Oh. He's still out of like Michigan now. He just does road stuff. Um. But yeah, he's he's like, yeah, hey, yeah. If you want to do it, talk to this guy. I took a comedy class, stand up comedy class, where I learned. <laughs> you to... took a class. Mm-hmm. So I started because I mean I didn't know how to get started, especially in Michigan. Where do you where, where do you go? A website? No, Facebook was like I barely even touched it at the time. Oh. Uh, I was still newer. Um, wow. Who do you call? What do you look up? So I was like, oh, how do I do it? He's like, go to a comedy class. Then they kind of they set you up, man. Especially because it's such an intimidating thing to start. People talk so much shit about comedy classes or how people started as if it's like you need a superhero origin story. Get the hell out of my face. You, if I, I think comedy class was the best way for me for me to start because I think a lot of comedy uh, comedians have a very very fragile ego and they're very you know insecure people mm-hmm. and things like that. So when I started comedy, I got a guy telling me, "Good job, good job. Try it this way," you know, um, and then I got a show where it was. 150 people that were all like cheering you on to do well because it was everyone's friends and family from the class so it was like you got a good experience out the gate you know oh. and then you can always that's my one solace and anytime I did an open mic and it was just like oh you're awful I would look back at the first show I did or the second show I did and be like okay I'm good at this I can do this Yeah. you know what I mean that's interesting. See, I started with classes, but like with improv and sketch, and then I I didn't ever did uh, stand up classes, but I just kind of thought oh, I'll try this. But yeah, you you got in, you got at least got in, and you you learned about it before you 
jump in. I mean, yeah. you probably knew what stand up took. Like, oh, you got to do open mics. You got to do this. You got to do oh, that. I, yeah. had no, I had no knowledge of it. So it's, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. And I just the comedy community in Chicago is kind of small. Like, there's a bunch of people I already knew but didn't realize that they did stand up. But, you know, like I met Shannon at a party like a year before, you know, I was doing stand up. And, you know, there's other people I knew randomly. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, um, yeah, so, like, there's a there's other random people that I'd seen throughout, the people that do both, like, improv sketch and stand-up and all that. Okay. So. But, yeah, it's uh, it's different. I think it's very different from improv and sketch because improv and sketch, it's like, oh, you do a show together and you're, like, best friends and, like, you all hang out and you get beers and it's very social. Stand-up when you're doing open mics, like, nobody talks to you for the first, like, three or four months until they realize that you're serious. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I feel like. Especially if you're if you're starting, yeah. No, I mean, not the no. I don't know. If... Maybe that's an exaggeration. It just it's such a big contrast. I think from when yeah, you, you know, there's there's a there's part of improv and sketch. I think is like, hey, let's all pretend everything's okay, right? You know what I mean? Like, let's all pretend we're all really doing well for ourselves, right? A little bit, like, mm-hmm. oh my god, it's so good to see you. I hate that person. Doesn't matter. It's I. We have to be like, be this certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one thing is that, could, because it's more of a community thing. You can you perform with people. Mm-hmm. You uh you have shows where you want people to come, and those people are also involved in mm-hmm. sketch or improv. So you hope they come. So in order for you for them to come, you've got to go to theirs. In order yeah. for them to want to come, you kind of got to be nice to them. So you got to be a little bit nice, even if you're having a bad day. Okay, today's a bad day, but I gotta kind of be like. <laughs> wow, tell me about you, you know, and uh, there's that part of it that um, attracted me so much to it when I started, like when I first came here, I'm like, oh my God, everyone's so nice, it's so friendly, mm-hmm. and then I just wouldn't, f- I wouldn't get off as much on it mm-hmm. as I would with stand-up, and I know that's a horrible word no. to, to, to turn a phrase no, to it's not, no, it No, I agree, because like when you're... Um, Whenever I did sketch or improv and the, the audience could laugh and be like, oh, okay, it's funny because it was in the moment, it was the group got the laugh, mm-hmm. but when you're up there by yourself, there's nobody else that you can attribute, like, that's you, that's right. only you, and you can't put that, you're like, oh, I made everybody yeah. laugh, and then, then when that, when it does well, when you kill, it just, like, it just gives you such a high. It does give you, it gives you high, and there's, not even because, oh my god, those people are laughing because of me, it's... It's because you made like every time I write a joke that I'm proud of, I basically like I turn it. It's like it's like a baby you just made. It's a thing you just made, mm-hmm. and when they laugh at it, what they're saying is what you did. This we love this. I don't. I don't necessarily point it toward myself. Like you like me. I don't even care as much as much as I'm like you like that thing I did, and that's what like the satisfaction of that. Um, Except that's the thing is when I did it with I don't know because when I did it with sketch when I did that sketch show I, was, I would write a few sketches that I loved, um, but just being a part of a sketch was just not. Ugh. Yeah. Writing one and doing it and directing it and having the direction of it go the way you wanted to that's fun that was good but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah no I mean I get it like um that's why like I have that little thing where we write a few sketches a month and do it you know and it's just like a monthly thing to keep the gears going but it's I don't know it's just not the same as stand up stand up the nice thing is if I have something new a new idea and I want to work out I can get up you know as many times as I want you know Mm -hmm. in the week to just work it out the sketch you have to plan rehearsals you gotta everyone's eight people's schedules have to coordinate and then it's like oh if they're talented they're gonna be cast another shit and like that's that's initially how I started I was like so frustrated because I was part of all these great groups but then we kept falling apart after like a run at Donnie Skybox or a run at the playground or somewhere else and then I was like you know what fuck it I want to be able to perform every night and I just googled the closest open mic and I went to it and then yeah (laughs) That's good. Kind of never look back. I don't know. <laughs> That's the thing. It's just, you're right. Having a lot of people having it, like, I mean, I was never a kid that wanted, I needed time to myself a lot as a kid and in general. Uh-oh. Here we had a little bit of technical difficulties. So for those watching, the video will just be still from this point on. There's about five minutes yeah. left in the show. Yeah, sorry, sorry guys. At the end or whatever, yeah, or whatever. I, I had like five <laughs> minutes. I well, I have five minutes left, so it's not that much longer. So oh shoot, okay. So it was like mm, how long are is the episode? 45? Like forty. 40 yeah, minutes? forty. Oh, but yeah, okay. I have like a timer that goes off at thirty-five. I gotta start asking that. Whenever I do podcasts, I always just over assume, mm-hmm. like I assume over the amount. 
Yeah. And I, uh, and I end up paying too much for my parking. <laughs> 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 oh, man, I could have given you a parking pass. I didn't think of that. No, don't worry uh, about it. Uh, no. Just 250 versus two, $2. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, video watchers. We'll just, uh, I'll just put like a still picture and just have that as the end. That'll, that'll be fine. Cool. But so, um, Let's see what else. I had a couple of little sleep sleep related questions for you. Oh shoot! Say. Yeah, um, sorry I didn't. No, didn't talk it, too much. no, I like it's it's all right. I like it when it goes organically somewhere else. It's cool. Cool. Um, what is your favorite thing to do in bed? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> My mom asked me. She's like, on your next podcast, you should ask this. And I was like, I was absolutely. Gonna, I was gonna say the same thing. <laughs> oh my god! Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. Is eating Oreos and reading the news. <laughs> Uh, While I'm having sex with <laughs> girls, I do all those Plural. things at once. Oh yeah, no way, I can't. I fuck up every threesome I try and get into. I've never, I've made it. To, no, I've made it to the. I saw the finish line. I saw it almost happening every time. What? I've never. Really? And one of my friends is like, "Oh, really, dude? Your biggest complaint is that you almost have threesomes. Like you're almost there." I'm like, "Yeah," because I'd rather just not. Because if you either, if you. <sighs> Threesomes are either everyone, all, like either all of it happens or nothing happens at all. There's no consolation prize to start to starting a, like not completing a threesome. You either get a threesome or nothing happens and you end up going fucking shit. Like, did you at least like make out with the three people and then, like yeah yeah yeah, well, yeah well, every time it seemed swimmingly. I think all each time there was one person that was like half in, half in, ah. and then when they they feel I think when they, when they see. That's always mm. what it is. I think one person always freaks out. So know? then what happens? Do you end up just hooking up with the one person? I shove both my thumbs up their butts. That's the first thing I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, who's got two thumbs and is ready to have a threesome? And then I just go, this guy. And then I, and it's just really, really great times. No, I'm sorry. What did, what did you ask me? Um, and I forgot. I think, oh, I asked you if, uh, like, what would you end up hooking up with just the one or? That's the thing. Uh, Yes, that happens. It happened. Well, yes, it happened before, but most of the time it's like, okay, well, you know, all or nothing. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, no, I would say about 20% of the time, 25% of the time, yes. Hmm. I got, it was resulted in one person being like, all right, well, well then you can leave, you know? <laughs> most of the time, That's awkward. Most of the time they know each other, so it's not like she's going to be like, oh, you're not comfortable with this? Well, can you go please wait in the hall? You See, know? I think that that's the thing. Some girls try to be like, oh, like flirty. Oh, this is fun. If you like make out. And they don't want to go beyond that if, they, if they're already friends. But and that's they... okay. It's not like I get mad. It's not like I'm like, you promised with your body language. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think some people have fun to a certain point and then you can be like, okay, I didn't, you know, I assumed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's okay. That's what I'm like. No big deal. Let's watch, let's watch real sports with Brian Gobble. <laughs> That'll put her to sleep, right? <laughs> That's my Cosby method. <laughs> put on sports and then wait till you're just in your deep REM. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, one other thing. I know we didn't talk about, like, your night dreams usually, but, like, what are your dreams overall, like, aspirations, dreams, metaphorically? Oh, metaphor dreams? Mm -hmm. um, no, I, I don't mean, like, dreams you have at night. I meant, like, dreams for your life. Career. Future. Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, I want to... Uh, travel a lot to different places doing stand up as a full full time, like n excited excited about it. Like oh, I'm getting to do this festival. I'm doing like and getting paid money to do it. Like I don't need to be on TV. I don't need to do anything but be just a, a comic. Everyone a comic people want to watch and have a reason to go see. Cool. That's it, man. That's, it's a simple goal. It's too broad right now. So I have short-term goals out there, but I don't know, mm -hmm. um, I don't know which one I'm pursuing most. Any specific place that you want to perform? Oh, yeah. The Comedy Cellar in New York. Yeah. Without a doubt. That's going to be a big day for me if I get a spot there ever. Just because I love, I have so much crazy respect for every comic that goes, uh, that performs there on a regular basis. All those people. Yeah. Yeah. I snuck into one show <laughs> when I was in New York. I was like, I'm meeting, I'm supposed to meet. John <laughs> and she's like what I'm like downstairs I was supposed to so I just went down the server entrance and then I stood by the door and I'm like wow, I was just told to wait here and I just watched half the show just waiting there but don't they usually let comics in free anyways 
I, I don't know. Maybe. It was in the middle of a show and it was fucking packed. Mm. It was insanely packed. I, yeah. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't a cop. I mean, I was a comic and, and I was visiting New York, but I was just... Yeah. The show was already going on. I didn't... I don't, I don't know. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't been there yet, but I went to a um, comedy store in LA and that was really cool to see that. Yeah. I so saw you did Kill, 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 uh, Kill Tony, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was cool. I did. I had no idea what it was at the time. I was like... Oh, really? I was like, they signed up for the mic and then there was... I didn't get drawn for the mic. So they're like, oh, try to sign up for Kill Tony. And so I did and... I was like the second or third name drawn, and that was super fun. <laughs> but anyways, uh, do you have anything upcoming you want to plug? No, no, not at all. Just uh, every Wednesday at Laugh Factory, yo. Every Wednesday at Laugh Factory? Cool. Yep. Um, well, thank you so much for doing this podcast. No it's a little weird. I know you didn't realize that you were actually going to be laying in the bed. <laughs> all right. I didn't know. It's okay. I'm sorry if I, uh, if I, if it's okay. I, I just, I feel, I feel like laying down and talking is, uh, is hard for me to do, you know? Yeah. Because I don't want to. So that's why I set up. Oh, no, that makes sense. <laughs> so when you lay down, you just want to go to sleep and not... <laughs> yeah, you know? I don't know. I guess I've always been that way. Ever since I was a little boy. Not much of a pillow talker, huh? Mm-hmm. No? <laughs> I can sit up and talk all day, though. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, so I wanted to drink my coffee, that's all. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for doing the show. No problem. I'm Sarah Albritton, and thanks for listening to Sleeping with Sarah, where I slept with Jeff R. Curie. You can catch Jeff every week at Supply and Demand at the Laugh Factory at 8 p.m. I'm releasing a new podcast each week. Be sure to tune in to find out who I have in bed with me next. Thanks to Josh Bryant for the music. You can also follow me on Twitter at Sarah Albritton. Until next time, good night. Sleeping with Sarah.